Hey everybody, this is David at Barnyard Bees. I just wanted to show you a few things we got here around the, the property where the bees are. And everything is in full bloom. The nectar flow is really coming on good. Uh, down there was my blueberries. I got zapped by the freeze. Then you come up here to the pear tree and I thought it got hit, but the bloom still looks good. And these old peach trees. Now these, these things right here aren't really much good for anything. The only reason I keep them here is for the bloom. It puts off a beautiful bloom every year. And they're, they're more just like ornamental because they put off very tiny peaches. These were, I, I found these out in the, the field out there years ago and transplanted them here and uh they just volunteer as they popped up so they're they're pretty trees but they I, I like watching the bees on them every year and the bees are pretty much all over them it's just now starting to warm up enough where they're starting to show up a little bit it's supposed to be up into 70 degrees today so very good day for your bees if you get a chance, go out, look, and see what they're feeding on. That's a good way to, to learn your bees to study because they won't take to all bloom. Regardless of what you see out there blooming, if you see right up there, there's a row of Bradford pears, and it's rare you ever see a honeybee on the bloom. They just don't like it. Now, a fruit tree, on the other hand, if you have tr fruit trees on your property, then you're very blessed because those bees will work and work those fruit trees pretty heavy. So this is one of the, some of the trees that dodged the freeze that when it got down to 17 degrees. And then you come over here and we got the elderberries and it'll be a long time before they bloom. And then down on the end, we have plum trees. These are old native plum trees that uh, that I dug up a long time ago from a friend that lived way up the road. Uh, these trees were like traditionally passed down for uh, generations. So they're, they're more or less native to this area. And you can look and see, and I have a bunch of them. Look at all the babies. Those are all babies all around that. And I hated to cut them down but I, I give away what I could and I planted a bunch over on my LJ property where our camper is and uh, the, th the thing is they're about about getting worms and bugs on them and I'm, I'm not a person that believes in a lot of spray but you'd have to time it just right uh, with a dormant spray that they use early before the bloom and then you'd have to be very very careful if you if you did it again after the bloom went away and they was no longer feeding on it uh it's it can be risky it, it definitely can be risky and uh, i'm not a big believer and i never have and i know some people do uh, they'll hit it twice so hit the dormant uh, with it uh early like in January, before anything's moving. And then they'll hit it again after the fruit has set on, there's no longer bees on it. You'd have to be, if, if you ever do that, you, you'd have to try to pick a time where it was in the evening right before dark and let it set up real good and make sure your wind's not blowing in the direction of your, of your, uh, your bees. That's something you gotta consider all the time. Be careful with sprays. Be very careful. Look up there. That those aren't. Uh, some of them are honeybees, and some of them are little, uh, little tiny. I don't know what kind of bees they are. Some of them are honeybees. You can, well, most of those are, but some of them are like almost like little tiny sweat bees. But look at the. There's a lot of honey bees coming in right there. But I just want to talk about that and talk about sprays a little bit. You know, a lot of people were. 100% against them Well, it, it depends, you know, because uh, in this in this day and age, it's hard It's hard to get any fruit 
if you don't spray because these right here if I just leave them alone which I always have I've never tried it but the fruit will be useless because every one of them will have a wormhole in it every single one of them and the only thing that makes use of them a squirrel will come up and he'll eat them off the tree <laughs> but that's about about all you'll get out of them so kind of you know keep that in mind you know it's sprays aren't always bad but you got to know what you're doing and you got to be have the right timing and you got to know which direction the wind is blowing so if you come out here randomly like now and spray well there you hit the bees while they're still feeding on the bloom which would be a bad thing the wind right now is blowing in, in the direction of my my hives so that would be a very bad thing you just you just gotta i'm saying you know do your research study up on it see when's the best time in my opinion like i said the best time to spray something like that would be in the evening almost dark where the bees are almost where they're already went inside uh where the wind direction in this case would be blown from the north to the south the wind would be blown south this, this the direction of my beehives is north and this is south so you'd have to have the right direction considering all that you should be okay as far as the spray goes so i just want to kind of touch on that a little bit and um, a lot of people that have orchards uh like in, in the, the almond groves in california well they spray them and they spray right on top of the the bees at night time with uh with their crop dusters their airplanes and it doesn't kill the bees uh so i don't know there, there's a way of doing things and doing it correctly that won't harm your bees but you better know what you're doing and uh be careful with that just just a little thought and a little sh uh, talk about pesticides and uh bloom and the nectar flow and such so um do your research on that there's a lot of a lot of people that know a lot more than I do when it comes to like fruit trees and uh, sprays and type of sprays and stuff like that. But I know there's a way of doing it correctly. Uh, that was my opinion on how you should do it in the evening and with the winds opposed, you know, going the other direction. But do your research on that. Study up. You know, talk to uh, people that have orchards. Uh, uh, I know where our camp is is in LJ, and they got huge orchards over there with apples, apple orchards, peach orchards, and they have honeybees. So somebody like that would know exactly when the right timing would be to be harmless to your bees. So just just something to consider. Um, don't forget, folks. We're trying to help the new beekeeper or anyone that needs help with beekeeping. We've got a lot of beekeeping supplies, nukes, packages, barnyardbees.com. Check us out. Help spread our videos. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Barnyard Bees. The bee dog and the bee cat.